Hello friends and welcome to Amateur Adventures in Beekeeping. My name is Dean. If you're joining for the first time, which most of you would be if you're watching this video because this is episode number one, um, please know the Amateur Adventures in Beekeeping, the amateur part, that's very literal. Um, I'm not an expert. I don't pretend to be one. I'm literally just sharing my journey of beginning keeping bees uh, and wanted to share that experience with people, kind of show you some of the raw emotions and the thoughts that I'm going through so that if you're thinking about becoming a beekeeper, um, you'll be able to either be inspired or be like, absolutely no, this is not what I want to do. Because uh, nobody wants to have that experience where you're like, oh yeah, I'm just all for it. And then you're like, oh wow, maybe this isn't what I want to do. And I didn't have that opportunity. Uh, most of the content I consumed were by people who I would consider experts. I still watch a lot of that content on YouTube. Uh, people like David Burns, other folks out there that are really p pump out a lot of content and are obviously very expert at the topic. So yeah, don't take this as advice. It's just entertainment and um, let's learn together along the way. If you see things that I'm doing in these videos, if you are an expert beekeeper and you're just doing this for nostalgia sake or because you think it's interesting to watch a novice just take a crack at it, please feel free to leave me advice in the comments. I am more than happy. I mean, that's why I'm doing this, to create some community, to uh, learn, to motivate myself, to push myself harder, to uh, learn how to do this the right way and uh, hopefully make it a hobby that I can really enjoy and uh, have some good results, I hope, without making anybody sick or angry along the way. So uh, my interest in beekeeping started a long time ago. I was a pharmaceutical rep and I drove most of the time for my job. I covered a large geography and I got really involved in listening to different podcasts. And one of those podcasts was kind of a homesteading podcast called The Survival Podcast, a guy named Jack Spierko, who was really pretty fantastic, had amazing um, guests. And he had one guest in particular that called himself the Bee Whisperer. He was from Wyoming. And I loved listening to this guy's segments. It was fascinating to hear about how bees function and bee culture and how they communicate and how they, they work. And so I was really, really enjoying that content. And then I kind of put it away for a while. So here recently, one of my family members, I guess it was kind of fall, winter of 2003, um, he was like, hey, man, I've been thinking about keeping bees. And I was like, man, that's something I thought about doing. And he's like, well, let's do it. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I got pretty excited and he was pretty excited. And I really started to pursue it um, in the spring. I looked for local classes, tried to see if there were any groups on uh, Facebook that maybe I could join where I could make some contacts and get some mentorship. And uh, so I signed up for a class with the county extension office and uh, attended that in February. It was very fascinating. It was interesting for me to see that there were a lot of people that were interested in keeping bees. There were probably 30 people that attended that class. And so I was able to meet a few people and it kind of gave me this sense of, okay, well, you're not the only crazy person who's thinking about this. Um, I still think maybe I'm a little crazy and I think my family thinks I'm losing it a little bit. But uh, the class was enjoyable and I came out of it with a little bit of increased confidence. Um, in hindsight now, I'm still feeling like the, the more I progress down the road, I get on this almost not the less confidence I'm having, but the more I realize how low my confidence actually is. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I came home from that and decided, all right, I'm going to do this. I need to get some hive equipment. So I came home from that class with a couple of different um, catalogs that I could order out of. There are some major suppliers in the United States that I looked at. Amazon, of course, you can get anything on Amazon. And because of my somewhat business brain, uh, I looked at Alibaba and Alibaba stuff can be cheap, but it can also be cheap, not just price wise, but, um, you know, value wise or quality wise. And, you know, curiosity kind of got the best of me, not recommended that you order things from multiple different places because, you know, they're, they're not necessarily all exactly the same size, standard size. And so if you're adding to your to your bee boxes, 
Um, it's nice to have a single supplier so that everything mates up nicely together and you can kind of keep everything um, uniform. But I went ahead, I ordered a sample from Alibaba. It was a single hive with two deeps or lower boxes, a bottom board, um, an entrance restrictor. And then it came with the queen excluder, a honey super, a top cover, an inner top cover, and then an outer top cover. And so I'm gonna go ahead and as part of this video, I'll show you a little bit of that unboxing and the assembly. And then uh, we'll wrap this one up. And in the next video, I'll get into, okay, how do I figure out where to get some bees? Cause uh, you know, once I, I got the hive built, my confidence was up and I was like, yes, we're gonna do this. The hive looks amazing. You know, it's really beautiful, natural wood. It's all coated in beeswax. And uh, so my confidence was booming. And then as I got closer to the uh, pick the bees update, the confidence starts coming back down a little bit, but we'll get into that in the next video. So let me go ahead and show you what I got from Alibaba and I'll show you a time lapse of getting it all put together and then we'll wrap the video. All right, so here is my Alibaba beehive. And uh, first impressions is it's insanely heavy. So uh, I've cracked it open, but I haven't really dug through it yet. So my idea is just to unpackage this and get everything assembled and kind of show you guys what I got from Alibaba for about $150, including the shipping. So every time I buy something from Alibaba, I'm always kind of thinking, I wonder if this could be like a business thing. Mostly they're just hobbies and interests, but I mean, there's a lot of stuff that, uh, well, not a lot of stuff, but I bought several things from Alibaba just to see like, what can you actually get quality wise for what seems like a pretty low price. And uh, so far, most of the stuff has been pretty impressive. So this is a beehive in a box. So just checking it out first. This is the cover, the top board. It's pretty heavy and uh, it's all coated in wax. Kind of like, I guess, probably beeswax. So it should be pretty durable. So they are made out of solid wood. Um, I was kind of expecting <clears throat> probably plywood and they're pretty thick. I'm, I mean, this box is super heavy. It's hard to lift with a single person. So they're just about three quarters of an inch thick. So this uh, is a narrower board this way. It's going to probably, that's going to be the honey super. So six and five eighths. So I'm just going to start cracking this open. Oh, this one much larger. Uh, these ones measure out at nine and about three quarters, a little less than nine and three quarters. So I don't actually know what standard is because this is the first beehive that I've ever tried to purchase. Um, so we'll just unbox the whole thing, put all the parts together, and then see about assembling. Oh yeah, this one right here has in woodworking what would be called a rabbit, but basically a sawed out portion at a 90 degree angle at the top, and that would be for catching your... Uh, your frames, your honey frames in this case, because this is part of the honey super. But I was actually wondering about that. I hadn't noticed it. Oh yeah. Uh, definitely two of these have them. So, and it should only be on two walls because the frames only go in one direction. So here's two again of the brood box. Honey supers. Brood box. So, okay, there we go. So there's a rabbited edge on the um, brood box. And all of these are coated in wax. They have a kind of a pine scent to them. So I'm not sure what kind of wood they made them out of from China, I'm guessing. Some kind of a pine um, spruce or something because it definitely has that pine scent. It smells really nice actually. All right, boy, that board is all but broken in half right there. It's got uh, it's 
So we get some quality control going on here. And it's not really one I think you could glue. You might be able to. Maybe right now I'll just drop a little glue in it and put a uh, put a clamp on it. Try to see if we can strengthen that up because if I really wanted to right now and I pulled hard enough on this, it would definitely snap in half. Let's just get a look and see if this clamp is... Oh, yeah. I'm not 100% sure that will help, but it definitely won't hurt anything. All right, process continues. All right. So these are gonna be part, I'm assuming of the top bars hold frames like the sides of the frames that's what I'm seeing so this will be the top of the frames and they should be two different thicknesses of these or heights there's cute shorty ones for the uh, honey super and the longer ones for the brood boxes these all have some kind of pre-drilled holes in them we'll see what that comes for I'm actually Half hoping that there's like instructions somewhere in the box. Here's a little entrance plug kind of for bees. I'll try to get close-ups of all of these, but there's just a narrow entry for your bees or a little larger entry. And that's going to go between the bottom board and the um, bottom brood box. So, all right. So here are the, the bars for all of the... Uh, the frames so the bars that are the top bars for the frames or potentially I guess the bottom boards it's the other side of that set those are the tops these are gonna be the bottoms it looks like this is kind of interesting they put a uh, marking pen in here and I think it's for marking your queen didn't know that was part of the kit but let's crack it open yep Queen marker it says it right on it. So I'm still not sure how a person would do that. I'm sure people who are actually like beekeepers would be laughing about that, but somehow you have to catch the queen and then you actually paint her a little bit on her back. And that just helps when you're going through your frames and looking at everything to identify. So pack the screws. These are the foundations for the brood boxes, I'm guessing, because they're a lot larger one two three four five six i wonder if there's more than that because there's supposed to be two brood boxes and i think these are eight frame hives so there should be like 16 of them yeah this is a top board where you can do your feeding you could put a jar of liquid on here with sugar in it and feed the bees so this is going to sit underneath the the top cover and over the top of whatever the top box is at the time, depending on what uh, stage we're in here. So, set that down. Okay, here we go. So we've got more foundation. And all of these foundation, I can feel they're like sticky. They're coated in wax, which is supposed to help the bees get established. So, there are six of these, which makes me wonder. Yeah, it looks like I only have one honey super. It's been long enough since I ordered them that maybe there only was one Honey Super, so. You can always build another one, I guess. So here's another seven of these. I thought I only had six of these. Six and seven, 13. Seems like that number should not be odd, so maybe we've got more. Oh yeah, here we go. So here is a bottom board for the bees. So this will sit underneath the hives. And then 
this little guy right here I was talking about earlier that has the cutaways for the bees to enter, it should fit right in this gap right here and would basically allow your bees to get in or out. Looks like this must be the bottom. This must be the top. There we go. Yeah, that fits flush with these frames. So that does have a little bit of play from side to side. And again, all of this is covered in a wax, which I'm assuming is correct. I mean, I took a beekeeping class, a local kind of adult education class, and I've watched, I don't know how many hours of videos on YouTube, because that's how my brain works. Anytime I get into something, I just shoot straight down the rabbit hole, and eventually I end up doing this kind of stuff. All right. So now we're talking, we've got the rest of these, it should be a total of 16, I think. So I've got 13. There's 20 of those. And then we had six of those. Be 10, so maybe a few extras in both of those. Unless it's, ah, it's going to be a 10 frame hive. So I've got 20 of the others. Okay. This guy right here should be a queen excluder. Um... I don't know that a regular bee can fit through those. They must be able to. You can't hardly see it there. It's mesh, obviously. You can see through it, but those holes are very narrow. Let's uh, go back to the caliper. I guess I've never measured a bee, so I don't really know. But uh, let's just see. How big is a bee? I mean, the idea is with this one that the worker bees can get through, but the queen cannot necessarily get through. So there's our width right there. About 0.17 inches. So we'll have to measure a B one of these days. I'm assuming they can get through, but the idea behind this is it's gonna sit on top of the brood boxes and allow the worker bees to go up through it so they can get up into the honey super and build comb up there and store all their honey. But if the queen can't get through, then you won't have brood in the upper boxes. It should just be pure honey. And I've seen people do with or without. So that's pretty much an empty box now, except for one piece of paper. And I haven't looked at it, but I'm hoping this is instructions on how to assemble this thing. Yay. All right. So let's get to assembly. So at this point, I had gone through my stuff, received, I guess, ordered my, my hive, got it all assembled. I actually really enjoyed the woodworking part of the project. Um, as you can see from the video, and it's appalling even to me, uh, this shop is the workspace of a person who's a madman. Basically, I need to get things organized uh, and probably reduce hobbies, which at this point, I don't think I'm actually doing. I'm kind of this beekeeping is a new hobby, so... Uh, but definitely need to get things organized a little bit better. Um, but at this point, you know, I had the hive assembled. It was on the table and I'm just thinking, wow, this is cool. You know, I'm going to do this. And uh, so it was interesting to take that kind of commitment and confidence 
and then going into the next step, which was acquiring the bees, you know, the emotions associated with that were, were something else. So I'll leave this video for here now. If you stayed this far, you're amazing. I can't believe you did it. If you want to see the insanity of starting beekeeping, basically uh, from zero to we'll see where this takes us, you're more than welcome to subscribe. I'll try to clearly label things as episode one, two, three, four. Um, so we'll get another video out soon. I've got the content already filmed. I've just got to get it edited down. Thanks for joining. Leave some kind of a comment. If you're an expert, let me know and uh, follow me along and then help me to uh, up my game and do this the right way. Maybe if you can help me not be an amateur, other people can take courage from that and, uh, and join the hobby for themselves. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Check back with you soon.